and right here you can see me checking one of the emitter resistors again there's four of them there are two for each side and they're really low ohms like for example these are supposed to be 0.47 ohms and if we take a look at my meter here we can see that it's 0.5 which is close enough in case you're measuring any of these resistors and you get a wrong reading what you have to do then is of course you have to unsolder one side and then remeasure again that's basically it also what I'm going to do here is change some of the resistors out that are here corroded or seem to have old glue on them like for example this resistor here it's R741 I think it's a 220 ohm resistor I'm gonna go ahead and um, remove this and remove the one on the other side and just put different ones in now let me just point out the emitter resistors the emitter resistors incidentally this here is the the top of the schematic is the left output and let me just go ahead and focus in um, you can see here these are the emitter resistors 0.47 ohms 0.47 ohms and there's two more for the other channel basically so I'm checking those out and I'm also checking out resistors like this R733 R731 basically all the bias resistors that determine the transistor voltages it doesn't take that much time and it's really worth doing Now I am going to check all the fuses, make sure they're all good, make sure I have all the right fuses in there. Depending upon what area your receiver is made for, say for example Asia or the United States or Europe, you might have a different kind of fuse set up. Um, but it doesn't really matter as long as you go ahead and you check yours and you make sure the fuses are all okay and that they're the right values. This red wire I'm holding in my hand is the main wire coming from the power supply to the main amp. This is where the amp gets its basically its power from. And what I did here is I desoldered it from this lug here. This is the fuse here and the fuse if you follow this red wire back it goes back to the power supply. What I'm going to do here is put a DC ammeter in between slowly bring the voltage up with my variable isolation transformer and then see if everything is okay if it's not drawing too much current of course if I didn't have this I would just go ahead and use my dim bulb tester which is this thing right here I think there's plenty of videos on YouTube which uh, shows how to make these things or explains them if not I can always make one in the future that's probably the way most people would do it since most people don't have a variable isolation transformer like I do. I'm just lucky to have one. I have the meter set up now to read DC amperes and one end of the one of the test leads basically is going to be clipped to one end of the fuse holder and the other one here the other clip here is hooked up to the wire going to the power amplifier now I'm slowly going to go ahead and bring the voltage up. What I'm going to, what I'm looking for, basically, I don't want any high amperage. Like I don't want a couple hundred milliamperes, or even an ampere, or even more. So let me go ahead and um, start everything up, and you just got to watch the watch the reading here slowly bring the voltage up basically well I have the meter set up wrong so let me go ahead and change that so now we've got it DC amperes so I'm gonna go ahead and bring it all the way up slowly and keep an eye on it make sure I don't have 
a lot of current, which I don't have, which is actually a good sign. So let me go ahead and take this up all the way. A little bit more. So right there, right now it's basically using 65 milliamperes. All the way to the left would be one ampere. This would be a couple hundred milliamperes. This would be a couple tenths milliampere. And that's 66 milliamperes right now. So I'm going to go ahead and let it run like this for a couple minutes. I don't have a load hooked up and I've got the volume all the way down. I just wanted to see what the unit would do when I actually powered it up. And it looks like um, everything is going quite good. And once I do this, I'm going to go ahead and um, either hook up loudspeakers to it or hook it up to a dummy load and an oscilloscope. Also what I'm going to do is uh, spray all of the controls, like the balance, the volume, and all that. I'm going to go ahead and spray contact cleaner in there. Now before I power this unit up, I'm going to go ahead and check the resistance of the power output transistors to ground. And for this I just put my meter in the ohmmeter mode of course. Clip one into the chassis here. And with the other clip, I just go on down the line and make sure I don't have a short to ground. So I'm checking four transistors and the two other transistors, small transistors that were uh, bolted to the heat sink. Another thing I want to do is spray all of the controls such as the volume control, the bass treble, the balance control if I can get to it. You can see right here at the end of my little stick here this control for example has a little hole in it right there. I'm going to spray right in there. Of course I do this with the power off as best as I can. I can't show this on camera because it looks like it's going to take a little bit getting getting to these controls. All you do is spray in a little bit and work the control back and forth a bunch of times. Right now I'm getting ready to take a look at the waveforms of the amplifier section of the receiver. And I have a scope hooked up to my dummy load. The dummy load is hooked up to the speaker terminals. And I'm using an audio generator to put out a 1000 hertz sine wave which I'm feeding into the aux input. I'm also using a variable isolation transformer. I just brought the voltage up and I'm going to go ahead and turn the volume up. See what happens. And seems to be okay. So I'm going to let it run like this for I'm going to run like, let it run like this for a while and I'm going to see if anything gets hot or smells funny. And right now I'm running about full power output which is about 15 watts per channel. Now I'm double checking with my Fluke multimeter and right here 11 volts RMS would be 15 watts per channel and I can even go higher so it's putting on at least 15 watts per channel as it's supposed to. So next I'm going to adjust the idle current and it says here connect a VTVM that is a meter across R735 and adjust the trimming resistor the potentiometer R727 until the VTVM reads 10 millivolts DC okay that's pretty straightforward and right now I've got my meter across R735 if you're wondering which one is R735 that's if you're looking at the unit from the front it's one of the large emitter resistors it's the one closest to the left side closest to the heat sink and what we do then is we start the unit up or power the unit up and then we let it run for a couple minutes until it stabilizes itself 
and then we go ahead and make that adjustment. Now since I have more work to do with this unit, for example, I have to swap some resistors out and I have to change all the capacitors of the other channel. I'm just going to show real quick how this is done basically. And here's the adjustment for this channel. I'm touching it with the tip of my screwdriver. I always prefer to use these little ceramic screwdrivers just in case I slip, which has well happened before. And what I do now is I just previously mentioned I adjust the voltage tool. It's about 10 millivolts DC. Now I've let the unit warm up for a couple minutes and now I'm going to go ahead and do the adjustment. Now when I do the adjustment, I want to go ahead and do it really slow. Turn the put tensiometer really slow. Also I have nothing hooked up to the amplifier and the volume control is all the way down. So let me go ahead and do the adjustment. Oh, wrong way. Right now I'm turning clockwise and that's making the voltage go down. I'm at 12 millivolts DC. I'm at right around 10 there. So once I work on this again and change resistors out, I'm going to go ahead and redo this adjustment. Probably you could do the same thing if you use the unit for a while or let it run for a couple hours or whatever. Then go ahead and redo the adjustment. It won't hurt. And of course you have to do the same thing for the other channel. 